unknowns to me, Frank was doing some research to find out who could actually conduct his music. He had, at that moment, just had a huge, tremendous commercial success with one of his records, and he wanted to realize a dream of his that he had always had, which was to hear his symphonic scores played by one of the world's great ensembles so they could actually hear what it sounded like instead of being massacred by by um, an orchestra that d wasn't properly rehearsed. So he wanted the best orchestra that he could find, and he wanted a conductor that could actually deal with it. And um, uh, I had heard of his music because I was visiting Mr. Boulez in the Institute of Recherche uh, IRCAM in the Georges Pompidou Center, and I saw on the bulletin board future commissions. <laughs> And on the list of composers who had been invited to write for, for Boulez and the IRCOM was Frank Zappa's name, and I couldn't believe it. You know, I mean, this was, a, for me, a relic of the 1960s. I, I just... I, so I asked my friend who worked there, what, what, what's the story with this Frank Zappa commission? He explained to me that there was a project that Pierre Boulez was going to conduct a concert of all Frank Zappa pieces and uh, record them. And I thought, God, this is crazy. So I got in touch with uh, Frank Zappa's manager, and I said, I'd like to see some of the scores, but I never I never really heard anything for a long time until one day I just got a telephone call out of the blue. It was from, from Frank Zappa inviting me to come to one of his concerts, and he would give me some scores. So I had never in my life been to a rock concert before. <laughs> having led a very sheltered life as a classical musician. So I went out and bought some earplugs and went to this rock concert. And it was everything that I had feared. It was smoky and sort of light shows all over the place, crowded with thousands of people dressed in very unusual clothing. <laughs> During the intermission, this in enormous bodyguard found me where I was, because I was sitting in the seat that was, he was so big, he looked like a sumo wrestler, and said, follow me. And of course, I didn't argue, I followed him, and he took me downstairs to the dressing rooms. And there I met Frank Zappa, who uh, was uh, taking his intermission break, and he showed me the scores that he had brought with him, and said, take a look at that, what do you think? And I opened up the scores, and they were really, as I said, so complicated that um, I was a bit taken aback. I didn't know what to make of them. So I explained to, um, to him that I, I really didn't know what to make out of the scores. I had to take them home and study them a little bit before I could give him an answer. So he said, okay. He said, take the scores, go home, let me know what you, uh, what you think. So I studied the scores, and I had a great time because they were so complicated. And they were challenging to figure out. And um, I found to my great surprise that in this stack of scores were some pieces that were really great, really exciting, wonderful pieces that not only were they just complex, but they were, they were well-written compositions. A few weeks went by and I got a telephone call from Frank Zappa, again unannounced out of the blue, saying, well, what do you think? Would you be interested in the scores? And I said, well, yes, I'm really interested. I, I, in a couple of scores, I'd like to perform them. And he said, well, how'd you like to, um, how'd you like to come with me? I've hired the, the London Symphony Orchestra. How would you like to come with me to London and record these pieces, do a public concert in London and record them? And at this point, I was really unknown. I was just basically out of school, and I was working with this orchestra that was having a tough time. This is one of the very few times in my life when I tried to be coy, because <laughs> I wanted to be cool. So, of course I wanted to go, <clears throat> and I liked the music a lot. But I said, well, gee, I don't know, I, I have to think about it. And, of course, that was being dishonest, but I said it anyway, and Frank said, hmm, well, I'll tell you what, I will give you 15 seconds to think about it. And after 15 seconds, you will either say yes or no. And if you don't say anything, then I'll just go to another conductor. So I said, well, actually, uh, Mr. Zappa, 
I am, I am interested. <laughs> and uh, that was the last time that actually I ever tried to be coy because when you're dealing with people who are really serious, um, there's really no room to play games. I mean, people who are really concerned about making music just want to make good music. So in a way, he taught me a lesson very early on in my career. Bogus Pomp, Kent Nagano, leder London Symphony Orchestra och året Magnus var här? Eh, 83. Tack för det. 